Hello my friends, I'm Clover and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku and today we're going to solve a puzzle called Punched by Philip Newman. I am a little bit behind on walkthroughs. Philip has been gracious enough to pick up a couple of the walkthroughs that I didn't do over the last week while I was ill. This I hope is the only one that still hasn't been done at all. This puzzle is from May 28th. And it is a 159, aka column indexer, Kropke pairs Sudoku. So I've explained 159 a couple of times uh, because Philip has kind of been on a streak of setting these, but I'm going to do it again. So first of all, normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column and each outline three by three region. You have three pink shaded columns in this puzzle is a 159 Sudoku. They are the first column, the fifth column, and the ninth column. And these columns tell you where the digits 1, 5, and 9 go in each row. So, for example, the first column tells you where all of the 1s go. So if there is like a 3 here, that means the 1 that is in this row has to go in the third position from the left. If there was a 6 here, the 1 in this row would have to be in the sixth position from the left, and so on. The middle column, column 5, indexes the 5s, so like if this was a 4, 5 would have to be in the 4th position from the left. And the rightmost column indexes the 9s, so for example if that was a 2, 9 would have to be in the 2nd position from the left in that row. So the columns 1, 5, and 9 tell you where the digits 1, 5, and 9 go in each row in the grid. We also have some black and white dots in the grid. White dots indicate that the two digits on either side of them are consecutive, so they have a difference of 1. Black dots indicate that the digits on either side have a 1 to 2 ratio, so one of them is double the other. Not all possible dots have necessarily been shown, so it is possible that there are other pairs elsewhere in the grid that have a consecutive or a 1 to 2 relationship that haven't been marked. We're going to start up here, because whenever you have four digits that are all in a 1 to 2, 1 to 2, 1 to 2 ratio, and they have to be different because, for instance, they're in the same row, they have to be, in Sudoku, 1, 2, 4, 8 in either order. So 1, 2, 4, 8 or 1, 2, 4, 8. However, this can't be an 8 because if it was an 8, we would have to put a 9 to its immediate left to index the 9. So that has to be a 1. So it goes this way and 9 is in the first position. The only other possible pair of digits we can use that has a 1 to 2 ratio is 3 and 6. And that makes our last two digits 5 and 7. However, 5 cannot fit in the 7th position, so this has to be a 5 with a 7 right there. We also have a 1, 2, 4, 8 in the central region, and it has to go this way around because there's already an 8 in column 6, and that tells us that the 5 goes in position 4 in this row, and the 5 goes in position 8 in this row, and the 1 has just been placed, so the 1 has to go in position 6 in this row. 4 is consecutive with 3 and 5. 5 is already placed, so we're going to put a 3 right there, which tells us that 5 goes in position 3 in this row. And these three remaining digits are 6, 7, and 9. There's a 7 in this column already, so the 7 will go there. 9 and 6. Because we've just placed a 9, we now know that that's a 4. So this is going to be either a 2 or an 8, the next thing, 9. And the remainder of our row is going to consist of 2, 7, and 8, and that cannot be a 2 because there's already a 2 in the column. Now, let's see. So 7 and 8 are next to 6, 7, 8, or 9. But 7 and 9 can't appear here because they aren't in a 1 to 2 ratio with any of the digits in a Sudoku grid. So these can't be 7 or 9. This also can't be 8 because if this was 8, it's only in a 1 to 2 ratio with the digit 4, which is already pretty well placed in both the region, the column, and the row. So that's going to be a 6, which makes this a 7, and this is now a 3, so that tells us 9 is in the third position in this row. And we now know those can't be 7s. These guys are going to be 1, 2, 8, and 9. That can't be a 1, we can't have any 8s there. And that can't be a 9, because we already have our 9 placed. In fact, these are 1, 2, and 8 to finish the row. And 1 and 2 are the only pair of consecutive numbers out of those, so they'll go right there. That makes this an 8, this is a 2, that's an 8, and that's a 9, and that's a 1. So now these three cells have to contain... Whoops, that's not going to be 1, 2, and 8. 
All right, I actually need to back up because I made a little error there, but luckily I caught it before I needed to redo a bunch of video. This can't be two or nine, so these are going to be one, seven, and eight. So that's a seven, eight pair. That very much changes what we're doing here. I'm glad I caught that. That makes this a two and an eight. And seven can't go in a black dot, so that's now an eight with a seven. That's a four, and that is a one, three pair. Nine, therefore, is either in the second position or the ninth position. Look at the second position, that's definitely not going to be a nine. So that will be a nine, making this a two. Now, if this is a one, this would have to be a two. And if this is a three, that could be either a two or a four. And both of those are valid at this time. So I want to look at some of my indexing columns a little bit more closely now. Here, what do I still need? So I'm still going to need a bunch of digits, but I think this is going to end up being fruitful. So I need two, five, six, seven, and eight in this column. That can't be a two. So I know a few things. I know there's a two down here, which means there's a nine somewhere in column two in these three cells. And it certainly can't go here because that would mean it was in between two other digits and they were both consecutive with it. That's not going to work. So this isn't our two. Our two is one of these two digits. What else can we do here? So we need to have a five or a six. We need to have a nine in one of those cells and we need to have either a seven or an eight. So I don't think we can do much with that just yet, actually. I have caught on to something looking at this though that we can do um, with something we've already pencil marked actually. So these two digits are in a one to two ratio. If this is two, this has to be one or four. If this is four, this is gonna be two or eight. But you notice that two and eight already appear in the column. So that's not a four, that's a two with a one. And sure enough, this all checks out that one is in the second position, position number two, this way. Three in this cell would have to go next to a two or four. And once again, we have a two and four in the column already. So that's going to be a six with a five or a seven immediately below it. The three resolves this one and three situation. So now we have our digits here. These are one, four, five, and eight. One can't go there. This also can't be a one, because if it was a one, we'd have to go one, two, three, four, which conflicts with both this two and this three. So that's not going to be a one. If it was an eight, we'd have to go eight, seven, six, five, which conflicts with this five. So that's not going to work. Four could be four, three, two, one. That seems to work. Or four, five, six, and seven, which doesn't work because of the seven there. Five can't be five, six, seven, eight, because there's a six in this column, and can't be five, four, three, two, because there's a four in the column. So this must be a four, three, two, one, and that checks out once again, because the one is in position number four. So we can eliminate fours from those cells. These have to be five, seven, and nine. And sure enough, yeah, we do know where the one is there. Okay. So... One now has to be in this cell that is actually a hidden one, which makes this a five to index it. So that can't be a five. Those can't be sevens. Here I'm going to need a six and a seven, and here I need a four and an eight to finish off the region. Okay, so one is in one of the eighth cells and one of the first cells. So one of these guys is going to be a one. But this definitely can't be a one, because if it was, I'd have to put a two right below it, which would place two twos in the row and two twos in the region. So that's going to be my one. That's a two. And now one is in position eight, just like that. I can eliminate two finally from right here. That means the only way I can do two digits in a one to two ratio here is now four and eight, and that is going to be seven or nine. And these are going to be 5, 6, 7, and 9, and I can make a couple of quick eliminations there. All right, one of these has to be an 8. This is, in fact, a 3, 9 pair, and these are from 5, 6, and 7. I have a 5, 7 here. That makes this a naked 6. And this is now an 8, which tells me where to put the 9. Now, 9 can no longer be in the 7th position, because that has to be a 5 or a 7, so it must be in the 5th position. That makes this a 9. And by Sudoku, we just grab a couple more digits right here to finish off the top part of the grid. Okay, so that's the top bit of the grid finished. Let's finish off the bottom. We can't place a 5 in those cells anymore. That makes this a 9, so now we know 9 is in the 7th position. By Sudoku, that's going to be a 6 and a 5, and we can confirm that that does tell us accurately that 5 is in the 6th position in the row. 
these guys are going to be three and five. Uh, here I need a four and a nine, which resolves. Here I'm going to need a two and a seven. Seven there, two there, six there, seven there. And I can resolve my five, nine. And that's going to be an eight and a three. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's lovely punched. This was the more challenging version of this puzzle. There was also an easier version released if you're with us on Discord. Um, give that a look if 159 or Kropke pairs are not really to your taste. You want a little bit of a gentler puzzle. Um, and the link to solve both that puzzle and this puzzle that you just watched me solve are in the description of this video. And I will see you again in a couple of days.